Okay, let's talk about base 5 today. In this video, I want to give an introduction on how the base 5 Lumero system works using manipulatives. And before we actually get into the Lumero system, I want to start with something that we're all familiar with so that it's easier for us to make connections later on. Um, I'm sure that you all have experience with uh, keeping track of your counting using groups of five. And so one common example of that is to use tally sticks. And let's look, take a look at this example. So as you can see, we have 12 sticks here because there are two groups of fives and we have two extra sticks. So now by just looking at the symbols, right, or the sticks, then you can already tell that we have 12 sticks. But instead of saying 12 sticks, sometimes you would probably say something like uh, two groups of fives and two more sticks. And either way, you are going to have the same number. We have 12 sticks in total. And why do we care about this? Because we want to refer this or, or connect this with the base five. And actually, we are going to do something similar here. So now let's take a look at the manipulatives that we are going to work with first before we actually deal with the base five numerals. And now let's take a look at this. Uh, the manipulatives that we are going to use would be those four pieces here. And yes, we can have we can make more symbols for the larger place value. But uh, just to demonstrate the idea, I believe that those four symbols will be enough. And actually, we get them names as well. And now let's take a look at the smallest place value. So um, this tiny square here, uh, we call it a unit. And, and then this long rectangle here with a that looks like a stick, we'll call it a long, and then here we have a square, so that we'll, we'll call it a flat, and actually we can call that a square also. And actually when you get to this piece, it's actually a um, a cube, but instead of carrying a cube, it's actually easier to carry a paper with, that looks like a long rectangle, and in this case we call this a long flat. Or you can call it a cube, it's up to you, so those are just names. Now, let's actually work with the base 5. So we are going to start with the smallest number, um, the smallest whole number for now. Let's take a look at this. So here we are going to start with the number 0. And actually when we start with the number 0, as you can see here, and if you're looking at the number, then in, because to distinguish the number from base 10, we are going to put a subscript here that says 5. And also you can do something like this. We'll put a tiny five here, but sometimes when we write a five uh, too large, then it will cause confusion. So I prefer writing it this way, but it's up to you. So now the zero. Now, how do we use the manipulative to represent this number? Actually, you cannot because zero means that there is nothing. So we are not going to put down anything here. So that that's just zero. Now, if you go to the next number, then that's one base five, right? That's the next whole number. And here, we are going to use one unit to represent that number. So we are going to say we have one unit here, right? And because that's one unit, so we are going to get what? We are going to get one tiny piece here. And then now, if you want to represent the number 2 in base 5, then what happens is that you are going to get two units in this case, right? That's really just adding another tiny square here. So that's two units. And then actually, let's do one more. So we are going to get three base five. And so we have three units. And of course, when we are using the manipulatives, we are going to just do three tiny squares here, and so on. Now let's keep going. So if you want to represent the number four in base five, then of course, just like what you would expect, we have four units. And because there are four units, so we are going to do what? We are going to draw four tiny squares here. Or we, if you are having tiny squares in, in the form of a paper, then it's even easier because you can move them around. So that, that will help. Now, now, if you look back at the tallies, instead of drawing five sticks all together, we are going to draw, uh, actually, we are, we are putting them together. But we are going to draw a stick that will go, um, that will form a group for the fives, right? We are going to do something similar here. So instead of having five base five, we are not going to do that. And actually, 
when we have five units, when we have five units, we are going to stack those four units, uh, the five tiny pieces, not four, but five tiny pieces together. And, and so it will look like this. So we're going to stack them and then now that's five, right? So let's, let's count. Okay. Yeah. So that's five. And actually that will make it look like a long, right? Actually that's, that's just this long piece here. Now, instead of saying five units, because we're regrouping the five units into one long, right? So we are going to, in, instead of saying this, then we are going to say what? We're going to say one long. We're going to say one long. And what? And how many units do we have left? We actually have no more units because now those units, they turn, they, they're combined together to turn into a long, right? So there are no more units. Now, to avoid drawing the pieces, we actually want to write down the number as the base five numerals, which will, will represent the same amount of pieces. So um, we are going to put down the number as one zero base five. Yeah, this looks like a 10 in our base 10 system, but we don't say 10. We actually would read that as one zero base five. And what happens is this, this one right here, it represents there is one long and that zero right here, it represents that there are zero units. We are going to talk more about this. We are going to introduce how to go from longs to flats and how to go from flats to long flats, but that will be in the next video. Thank you for watching this one.